Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, we're on the test server and we're diving into Nightmare Hydra. And this honestly is one of my the favorite Hydra teams that I've built in a very long time. This one is absolutely awesome. What you're seeing here in the background is the start of the run. We get pretty unlucky here at the start of the run. Why am I letting this go through? Well, very simple. I put the team in, I clicked play, and I walked away and I had my dinner, right? There is zero interaction with this particular run. And you'll see, we're still going to get a one key. And what are we doing with this team? As you can see in the background, this team is built around counterattack. And in particular as well, it is built around Oella, who is one of the most recent fusions. In my opinion, actually like an S tier champion. She's actually incredible. The more uh, I, I, I think about this champion and the teams you can do with her, the more I'm convinced that she was just criminally underrated. And it's actually like insanely, insanely good. Uh, so yeah, look, there you go. I will show you a run as well where I do actually not take control per se, but well, we still leave them running on auto, but we do our, you know, targeting ahead when they devour us, which does make actually a surprisingly large difference in particular because we're running Geomancer. who's going to be otherwise just burning whoever he feels like, even if it's good or bad. So we certainly get beat up a lot here at the start. Reason being... Uh, we didn't land the Provoke at the start. All of our uh, buffs got cleansed off and the Poison Cloud goes off. So it makes for a really, really bad start to this run. So if you were to do this and just, you know, go, oh, we didn't land the Provoke at the start. Let's free refresh and go again. You're going to be all good. So you're asking, well, where are these Provokes coming from? Well, what we're actually doing, we're going to run, we're running in this uh, composition, two champions in Provoke set. Mother Cybelle, who is in the lead and giving us a speed aura, 24%, one of the best ones in the game. Uh, and then Mighty Uko is in a Provoke set as well. Uh, so we've got two champions with AoE A1 abilities that are going to be procking off those counter attacks. We also have Inquisitor Shamale here so he can boost Mother Cybelle uh, whenever the Head of Torment is in for even more A1s, firing off these AoE A1s with a chance to provoke. And then, of course, Martyr coming in as our counterattack champion. She does have a Provoke as well. Now, if you were to play this on proper, like manual, um, or even if you turned off Martyr's A3, right? Her A3 is a four-turn cooldown AoE attack that does decrease attack and provoke. Uh, and obviously, Uko is bringing us AoE decrease attack extremely consistently. Uh, and himself and, and uh, Mother Cybelle are bringing provoke. You could just leave it, like, turned off her A3. And then when you see the head of uh, Decay is getting close to full turn meter and you've got unlucky, you haven't landed any provokes from the provoke sets, or let's say you only have one of these two champions running in provoke set, um, you could then come in and use Martyr's A3 to lock him down. Fun thing about it, though, Martyr is certainly not essential. You can absolutely replace her in this team. The one thing that she does bring is decreased defense on her A1. So she is our source of decreased defense. And if you look at these heads right here, you can see we've got decreased defense out on three of them right now. So she's actually reasonably consistent at putting it out. Um, but you could replace her with the other counterattack champions. You could put in Valkyrie, who's going to make this a much safer run with the big shields. You could put in uh, even Skullcrusher, the epic, who's going to protect your team a lot more. Um, it might be a little difficult to keep Skullcrusher alive. I did a whole video on Skullcrusher recently with Deadwood Jedi, and he was giving me a bunch of tips on how to combat that. But that can totally work as well. In fact, the first run I did with this team, I forgot to put accuracy on Martyr, so she literally didn't land any moves. She was only doing counterattack. And the increased defense she brings is also brought by Mother Cybelle, so you don't need her increased defense. Uh, and we still easily one-keyed. We got like over 40 million uh, in that run without any, without Martyr being able to do anything except buff up, basically, and, and do some okay damage. Um, yeah, look, that's basically how the team works. Geomancer's in there with an AoE A1. And one of the cool combos we've got is Mighty Uko brings a buff strip and can put block buffs. A little inconsistent, the block buffs. Like, he can weak hit and stuff. And it's not a great rotation. Head of Wrath, <laughs> unfortunately, is Spirit Affinity. So that sucks a little bit um, for Mighty Uko here. But hey, we get away with it. Um, but uh, yeah, Mighty Uko can put decreased accuracy. Geomancer with his A1 can put decreased accuracy on these enemy heads. And then Oella is coming in. And Oella is giving us increased resistance and extending that. Effectively, Oella gives us permanent increased resistance on everyone. The only exception is pretty much going to be when someone comes out after being consumed. Uh, and Mother Cybelle in the lead 
is going to outrun her buffs um, once the Head of Torment comes in, because she'll get turn meter off of Inquisitor Shamael. Um, but as you'll see, like when these enemies are doing all of their attacks and stuff like that, uh, you're going to see just resists popping up like crazy. Like we should see when this Head of Blight, the second head right here, gets around to a turn uh, and tries to poison us, we should just see a wall of green text, a wall of resistance across our team, as that does effectively absolutely nothing. Here we go. Look at this. Look at all those resists. Beautiful. We got the, He landed one poison. It doesn't even matter. Completely neuters his damage. We can resist the provokes. We can, everyone becomes a mischief tank. Basically, no one can have their buff stolen by head of mischief. There's always a small chance, 3% chance they can steal, but we can also be landing that block buffs at Mighty Uko, and we can get away with it. And it's just a sick combo. Honestly, this is a super sick combo. I have to give a big shout out as well to uh, Illegal Mist. Uh, now, I didn't steal his team. He was actually building very similar to what I was thinking. He's a huge Oella fan as well. Illegal, he's a small content creator. He's just, you know, started doing stuff. So I have to give him a huge shout out because I always love seeing content creators jump in and do like Hydra dedicated videos, which he does. But he was running a very similar thing on Brutal, which obviously got the one key here as well. He's also using Martyr. Um, brought in Mithrala, which is cool. That's one thing would be nice, actually. It would be a hex. Oops, sorry. Let me jump back into the run so we can see what is going on here. Let's skip a, a little bit ahead here and see if we can get... Oh, look, we actually broke someone free through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, let's, let's see if we can get the Head of Torment. Wow, we actually didn't get... I didn't look at this run. Like I said, I went for dinner. <laughs> okay, here we go. Perfect. We've got the, the Head of Mischief and the Head of Torment coming in. So let's see what happens. This should actually be pretty fun little thing to see and to actually watch. These are the two heads we didn't see at the start. We're on test server. It is rotation three of the Hydra. So we'll see that. But yeah, I got highly recommend you guys check out Illegal Mist. Check out his Hydra vids. They are fantastic. He's built a whole bunch of different variants of this counterattack team. If you want to build up different variants. Um, who are the essentials in this team? Who is replaceable? In a weird way, you technically don't need the counterattack. I've built it sort of specifically. I, funny enough, I don't know if the counterattack is strictly necessary, if it's strictly the best. Like, we could probably bring in a totally different champion non counterattack and still do just fine, right? We could probably build in just a damage champion. Like, we could probably bring in Royal Guard or something and be be cool, you know? Um, you bring in a Michinaki if you got him from the Guaranteed recently, and he's going to do way more than the counterattack would, for instance. Um, I think the key. Champions for this team, Oella is really the key. This is really more so even than a counterattack team. This is an Oella team. And by the way, also, have you noticed the insane amount of healing she's doing and she extends buffs? She boosts turn meter. She is nuts. Uh, Oella does bring decreased speed A1, which was kind of part of why I was thinking, ooh, she could bring decreased speed with my martyr. She brings decreased attack A1. We could kind of bring a lot of buffs, debuffs just with counterattack. I actually don't have Oella built with any accuracy because I brought in Mother Cybele who's bringing decreased speed, AoE, A1 anyway. But it is something you can consider. Uh, but I don't have her built with that. But she's bringing so much. I think that Inquisitor Shamael is kind of essential. We're, seeing we're, we're building the counterattack. Let's say the counterattack is essential. And I think Mighty Uko is kind of essential as well. Mighty Uko has such a good A1 for counterattack. Works incredibly well in, in a provoke set here. And uh, brings you the buff strip. Brings you AoE decrease accuracy, block buffs. Just so good. And he also brings increased speed, which Oella can then extend. Not super consistent. They don't sync up like crazy, but they sync up enough that it does make a difference. Um, you do, I think, still want to decrease speed, AoE or something. Like I said, you could use Oella, especially with counterattack, to do that. We've brought in Mother Cybele, who's fantastic here with the speed aura, the AoE A1. She just fits inc incredibly well. She's an amazing Hydra champion. It's super good. Uh, but you could, you could, in theory, replace her with somebody else. And you could put, let's say, the Geomancer in the lead. In terms of Geomancer, you could absolutely replace him with Mishinaki, with Tila Gourmain, champions like that. And you're going to absolutely slam. You're going to do huge damage. Um, I unfortunately don't have Tila on the test server. My test server account was cloned over before I got Tila. And vi same thing with Michinaki. Uh, who is still fragments on my main account and, and they, they obviously weren't cloned over to the test server either it was cloned before that but i'll have them next test server we can maybe revisit this team i definitely think michinaki in particular if you put michinaki in instead of geomancer he brings aoe hex all the ally attacks from his a1 um we've got increased defense on this team from either martyr or mother cybel so michinaki's gonna hit pretty darn hard 
And he also brings AOE decrease defense, decrease attack. Now, decrease attack, not essential, but the AOE decrease defense, it's going to work super well. Like, especially if you bring in that, say, Skull Crusher, or, or you just ditch the counter attack entirely, it's going to work super well. But um, yeah, as you can see with this, like Mother Cybele, she's going to be pumping through her turns. She's actually quite interesting with her um, increased defense move. Oh, actually, this is quite unlucky. We get um, Shamail eaten by the Torment Head being out there. But Mother Cybele is quite smart. Like if, if champions have increased defense, in this case from Martyr, she's not actually going to do her increased defense move. She's just going to spam her A1. I did have to turn off her A3. It could be useful, but for whatever reason, she was genuinely just using her A3 to try to kill Oella. And I don't know why, which was really strange. Uh, but there you are. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we're hitting 20 million here. We obviously break that champ free, no problem. Um, right here. Oh, this is actually kind of interesting. So we have the head of mischief eats somebody. And this is where, obviously, if you target the Geomancer stuff, it's going to be way more consistent. We did not have that luxury in this run, and we just had to randomly get through. I think Geomancer does burn mischief. Yeah, look, we got lucky there because mischief is low on life, and we do get through. Um, but I actually think what happens here fairly shortly is that the Uko comes back out and oh maybe not maybe not oh maybe it was a different run yeah there was definitely a run you can see here's where we're going to start to wipe someone does get eaten uh, there was definitely a run where um we got all of the buffs stolen uh, from from Uko when Uko came back out and that was kind of bad Uko stole some of the buffs with his passive off the enemy team got the most buffs didn't have increased resistance and then increased resistance and counterattack got stolen. Sorry, no, no, counterattack got stolen off of him, spread around, and things got nasty pretty quick. But there you go. Look, this team, we went in completely full auto, right? Completely full auto. No input for me whatsoever. I wasn't even watching the run. 37 million on Nightmare Hydra. That is pretty crazy. We look at the stats overall. Geo with 14 million, the most of the damage. Uh, Shamail actually doing a lot. I've built him for damage. So he's doing eight and a half million. Mother Cybele with those AOE A1s doing 6.5. And we got very unlucky, honestly, in that run. That's an unlucky run where Head of Torment didn't spawn in. Head of Torment is in there. She's going to do way more and be way more consistent. Uh, Uko did about 3 million with Warmaster. Martyr, about 3.6. Again, with Warmaster, some damage. You can see Oella not doing any damage. But look at the healing. Look at this. Nobody has any healing. And then Oella is pumping the heals like crazy. This champion is insane. I'm telling you, she's absolutely nuts. Uh, let me see if I can find the other run. Was it this one? We had a fail. No, looks, this looks like the run. This might be a run where the heads stole counterattack. Oh, no, they, they actually stole it with increased resistance. And we had counterattack increased resistance on everyone. And the team actually lived through it for a while. It was actually kind of nuts. Like, look at this. They stole it like right here spread it around and like i can speed this up so we get through it you get a gist but i was so impressed by this um we actually lived through for ages <laughs> oella is that busted like she's absolutely nuts between the turn meter all of the heals that she puts out everything like we're not making it through it's not a clean it's not a clean thing by any means uh but hey we, we survived for quite a while i guess we died right here but we survived pretty well uh, which surprised me has it jumped onto a different video? Yeah, it totally has. Oh, whoops, sorry. This one. Auto played into the other run. So if we come to the end of this, and I hit pause. Here we go. So this one, this is the one where I did actually manual it. So I did actually manual, well, not manual the run, but I actually was targeting heads that ate us. That was all. That was all. That's the only difference, is targeting heads that devoured our champions. And we did 55.1 million damage on Nightmare. It's kind of crazy. There we go. This is what I'm talking about as well. Geomancer at 21 million. Mother Cybele, she's doing about half of that with 12.9. Right, pretty close. Shamael, very similar with 11.2 million. And again, Oella pumped out 5 million healing in that run, which is nuts. I think, by the way, I don't, as you see, I don't have her awakened, but you get Miracle Heal on her and she's going to be fantastic. So good. Unbelievably good. Um, so there you are. Like, damn, I think this team is absolutely sick. Let me show you the champs. Let me show you how I built them. The gear is pretty intensive, to be fair. So first of all, we've got Mighty Uko. The great thing about this, he's in Provoke set. Now, here's the thing, right? Especially if you manual this. He's not doing that much damage. 
Like War Master, without War Master, he's going to be doing something like Oella. He's going to be doing almost nothing. Basically useless for damage. War Master is doing all of his damage. But you could, you could give him Fearsome Presence. You could ditch the offense tree, go defense tree for Fearsome Presence for a better chance to provoke and to sheep so that he becomes an arena monster. It's not as good as stun set. It's got, it's got a much better chance to place but Mighty Uko, by sort of definition, is going to be a little bit squishy for Arena. So he's going to die and people are going to break free of Provoke. So it's not as good as Stun Set and Stun stops their CD cycling down and stuff. But still, it's a good option. If you got gear like this, I think you could totally make it work. This is very good gear, to be fair. 285 speed, 352 accuracy, um, 3.3k defense, 68k HP. I'm recording this the day before Live Arena goes live. Um... And probably because of Life Arena going live uh, and the Fusion going live, it will take a couple of days before I'm able to publish this video. Probably this will go up over the weekend and I can take some time off at the weekend, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, he's, st he's still going to be a beast in Life Arena, even with this build. Um, ditching the stun set for this. But yeah, th those sort of stats, he's going to be extremely good. So there you go. You can watch my video on Mighty Uko to see him in stun set and see more. But yeah, it I... It's pretty sick. You could even bring him in in the stun set with the Mother Cybele in Provoke set and get away with it. I think that works too. Here we have Mother Cybele. She is so good. That 24% speed aura is insane. The AWE A1 is insane. 50% chance of decreased speed. Turn meter boosting herself. And this is actually quite useful too. The revive on death increased defense is actually really nice to make things just safer and clean and easy. Uh, so she is fantastic and running her with brimstone for her stats here we've got her really good speed again pretty good gear 268 speed 364 accuracy she does have 351 resist what did uko uko have yeah you can see that's probably why uko had the buff stolen actually right uko does not have enough resistance it still works right with decreased accuracy and increased resistance you still kind of get away with it but it's not ideal but it's it's tough to get those stats on uko I want a second Uko, to be honest with you. I can build one specifically <laughs> for this. Yeah, so a bit of resistance, but she is pretty sick. More HP will up her damage more, but I, you know, with the speed, it's just hard to get the stats. She's coming in War Master and extending her debuffs. You could actually probably get her Sniper, give her a better chance to place decreased speed. That might be a bit better than Lasting Gifts. So that's sort of up to you. Um, if you're going to use her A3, uh, lasting gifts is pretty good but yeah i don't know maybe sniper's the way to go maybe sniper's the way to go to be honest uh, next up we have oella the star of the show in my opinion the star champion of this run she is so good guardian set so she's giving us some protection and healing herself back up like this passive is nuts when people are getting smacked like this scales so well into these higher levels of hydra because those big smacks coming in are going to put out continuous heals so that's a lot of healing. And then she can extend that those continuous heals for even more healing. Of course, extending all the other buffs. This is a huge heal just by itself. It's a massive heal. And then massive turn meter boost. Permanent increased res for your team. We didn't even use the A1 in this run. Like She's just a god tier champion. She's unbelievably good. I'm running her with these masteries. So we've got timely intervention. So she can like slip in and potentially pop that A2 to save somebody if they drop low. We're just going to be like upping her healing. Like 5% more healing. 10% uh, more healing if they're low on life. We'll give her some turn meter if her stuff expires. Um, yeah, all this sort of stuff. More healing if there's fears out there. Why not? Obviously, extending the buffs if we extend those continuous heals. Absolutely fantastic. Give her turn meter when someone is crit. Awesome. A bit more resistance out for those buffs. So those continuous heals do more resist, etc., etc. I think this champion is absolutely... She's insane. She's so... Like, as a buff extender champion... She's insanely good as a healer. She's insanely good as increased resistance champion. She's by far the best one in the game. Ah, oh, man, I, I'm such an Oella fanboy now. I really am. We've got Martyr finally getting to show her face after I pulled her uh, in a, you know, fairly recently. I haven't had the time to book her up. I haven't had the books to fully book her up on the live servers, unfortunately. But she is coming in. I put her in protection set. Why not? You know, 30% chance to protect buffs just to give us that extra random layer of safety. I don't think it really made a difference. There's good stats here, though. The speed is good, though her base speed is pretty terrible. So I think protection set is nice, but not essential. That's how I'd say. You can put her in whatever gear you want. And I think for the gear that you're putting her in, you do want to get her speed up high. So you're looking for gear with lots of speed rolls. Um, I did build her with some damage, and she did okay damage. It's not too bad. Um, 
high accuracy so she can land the decreased defense she can land the provoke the decreased attack and then some resistance to complement the oella uh, as well but yeah pretty pretty straightforward and i think any of the aoe counter attack champions are gonna work just fine You've got war master and better chance to place decreased defense and to extend those debuffs pretty slick we have then uh next up was uh i've already forgotten we've got shamel and we've got ah geomancer let's look at geomancer first actually so geo um not this one we were running this one so geo it's the same masteries straightforward enough he's coming in uh he is in reflex and perception so just a chance to get more of those burns out and he is running at 220 speed so he's actually a bit slow i'd love to have him faster he's actually pretty slow bit tight on my reflex gear i'm afraid He's got good enough accuracy. Again, a little bit low for Nightmare. We'd love to have an extra, you know, an extra 30, 40 accuracy, really. But uh, we're getting away with it, mostly. He had a couple of resists you might have noticed in the run. So yeah, again, not actually the best gear, but good enough for what we're doing. He gets the job done. And then we've got the damaged Shemail, which is a bit of fun. I put him in lethal. Um, this doesn't really work on his A2 because we'll basically always have enough buffs. It doesn't work, but it works on his A1. Not really important. I think probably Zeal is going to be the best set for Shamail by probably a mile, I'm pretty sure, which is going to be the new set from the Live Arena. So Shamail is something that's worth considering. He's actually pretty good in Live Arena, quite underrated. So I would consider putting him in a good Zeal set. What I did with him, though, which is different from a Live Arena build where you have him slower, I did have him running pretty good speed. He has okay defenses. Then 4.5k attack is actually quite a bit because his base attack is quite low and 250% crit damage. He has a bit of resistance, with 190 resistance, that's it. And he's resisting basically everything in this run. That's the power of decreased accuracy plus Oella increased resistance. Um, and he's got these masteries. And yeah, he puts out good damage. And also, of course, he's doing the stuff with the passive. You could use a different Bill Shamel. You could use um, Shamel like this, like using Guardian. You could totally use this, like a, a Guardian Shamel, not anywhere near as much damage but he's going to help you survive a bit. That's totally fine. You could have him with higher resistance. That's fine as well. Put him in a blood shield if you want. I actually had my martyr in a blood shield to try to get out more of those decreased defenses that should be targeted by mischief a bit, and that could work. Um, but yeah, there. that's it, guys. That is the team. I think it's a crazy good team. I actually will probably throw this together myself. Um, like I said, I don't actually use these champions, these specific ones in any team right now. Um, so I'm gonna put probably Michinaki in this position right here, and this might it might even become like this might displace my Krisk team, which is crazy. This might displace my Krisk team as my go-to team. I think it's that good. I think it's that good. So there you go, Oella. Oh man, she's quickly becoming my new favorite champ. I I love these freaking the fusions they've done recently, like Supreme Elhane, Oella. People hate on them. I tell you, I love them. These champs are so good. All right, look, there we go. Enough, enough of me going on about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, remember, check out Illegal Miss if you want to see some more like cool Hydra counterattack teams, different options you could bring in. This was my team. I think it's sick. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.